Hey guys, Octane Restorations here. Today we are showing you how to paint a motorcycle tank with spray paint or rattle cans. So this is the before. As you can see, the tank was in pretty rough shape and this is the after. So this is what we're gonna be doing in this video. We've got a full tutorial tune, so stay tuned. So first thing we gotta do is sand the tank down. I'm gonna sand this tank down to bare metal. I uh, originally tried 320 grit sandpaper, sanding block, but this tank is from the 70s, so it was just <laughs> way too hard. The paint was way too, way too difficult to get off, so I ended up going with the wire brush. I tried paint remover and even wrapped it in saran wrap, which normally works, but with this one I think the paint was just so old it just hardened so much over time that it was possible to get off. So I went with the wire brush right here just from Harbor Freight and it did a great job getting everything off that I needed. Took it all the way back down to bare metal. So if you have a tank that the paint sands easier uh, you don't necessarily have to go back down to the bare metal. You can use the tank as a primer or you can use the paint as a primer just paint on top of that layer but I want to do this the best job I could and to make it look the best you know taking it back down to bare metal gives you the best surface so that's what I did here tank with 500 grit wet sandpaper uh, doing this to ensure that the primer has a good surface to adhere to and I'm just making the whole metal surface uniform right here so bare metal to 500 grit right here So 70% isopropyl alcohol is what I'm using to clean all the residue off. You know, your fingerprints, leave oil, and all of that will mess up the paint bonding to the metal surface. So whenever I got in the garage, I didn't show it on camera, but I had gloves on and used gloves and wiped the whole thing with uh, isopropyl alcohol. So. Here we're actually going to lay down some primer. This is Rust-Oleum Automotive Primer. It is a sandable primer and I've used this on a few projects before and it's been really great so I have nothing but good things to say about it. So first layer I do a light coat so that way you know there's no runs and it just gives something for the next layers of primer to stick to. So, Read the instructions on the back of the can. That's going to be your best bet. Uh, that's what the instructions on this can said to do, and I've had good results. They're the they're the paint pros. They're the one that made it, so I listen to them. It'll also give you your dry and reco times and how long it takes to cure to sand it and all that important information. So whichever primer you go with, just read the instructions on the back of the can, and that'll be your best bet. I normally do two to five layers, including that light coat at the very beginning for the primer. In case if I do have any high spots, you know, I can adequately address those. So, again, this tank was in good shape, didn't have any dents, I didn't have to use Mondo or anything like that. So, I've got some tanks that definitely will need a little bit of <laughs> dent filler so those can come in the future but for this one all it is is using rattle cans and yeah even rattle can clear coat that we're going to show you later in the video so yeah just another rundown so take the tank all the way down to bare metal whether using paint stripper sandpaper uh, wire brush and then 
once you have it down to bare metal, take that surface to 500 grit, which gives it a smooth surface, but it's still rough enough that the primer can adhere to. So that's going to be the main important things. So this is that layer of primer dried. As you can see, it, that was the first layer. And it didn't take, you know, 10 minutes to dry. So here's the next layer going on. And I've kind of sped it up for you all a little bit. And this layer you can put on a little thicker than the first layer. Just because it has something good to ad adhere to. But you still don't want a heavy layer. Because you run the risk of it running. So I'd rather more layers thinner than just, you know, one or two really thick layers. So... Just got to get that full surface completely coated. And here we are, we're sanding with the 500 grit sandpaper, like I was telling you, wet sand. <laughs> so this is just to get a nice, clean, smooth surface, free of defects, so that whenever you start laying down the spray paint, uh, it has something good to adhere to. So I also cleaned it with rubbing alcohol. I guess I just missed the video after wiping it off real good. So, here's the paint going on. Whenever I paint, I like to start the stroke before the tank, and then I end it after the tank. So, whenever you initially depress the top of the spray paint can, you get a little burst. Uh, and that burst is a little bit more than what's going to come out the rest of the can during the quote unquote stroke. So, as you'll see, whenever I start, I start on the outside of the tank and then I bring my hand to the tank and then I finish outside the tank. So, just gets nice, even layer that way, and you don't have those bigger bursts of paint, so you don't run the risk of runs or anything like that. So, just a little tip. So again, kind of like the primer, you want this first layer to be thin just to give the future layers of paint something to stick to. So, first layer, very thin layer, which is what I'm doing right here. And then I follow the back of the can as far as the recoat times, which I believe this one was 10 minutes. And that's okay if it's a little, you know, if there are a little bit of discoloration in it right now, because we're gonna dress it. We're just gotta, just gotta get the paint on. So, and then after, follow it up with like I said anywhere from two to five medium coats I believe on the Yamaha RD60 right here I used three medium coats after the initial just so that I would have some room to work with if I needed to sand it with like 5,000 grit sandpaper I was preparing for the worst because I was painting it outside you know so of course if you have a studio or anything like that uh, the chance of getting dirt and objects is less, but I chose a day when it wasn't windy at all. Uh, also, there's a cover above me to protect me. So, using both of those steps, it actually, I had, I think, two tiny little blemishes that I was able to sand out with 5,000 grit sand, or no, 3,000 grit sandpaper, sorry. So... But I just want to show it's possible that you can do high quality jobs without high quality studios and stuff. Which is what the plan of this video was. So.
And like I said, it looks orange peely now, but once we apply the clear coat, the clear coat will get rid of that. The clear coat will set inside those little quote unquote grooves. So before we clear coat it, I have to apply a decal. So I had to wait over two weeks to let the paint fully cure to apply this decal. On one of my other motorcycle tanks, I didn't apply a decal, I just did different layers of paint and then waited for it to dry and then tape it off. And it worked good, but I just wanted a cleaner look with this one since I was doing a frame off restoration. So my plan on this one was to just clear coat over the decals. So I cleaned the whole tank with glass cleaner before this to get fingerprints off. And then what that mix was was soapy water. So I used a soapy water mix before sticking the decals on so that way I could get air bubbles out and move them if I had to. So just kind of like whenever you're applying a vinyl wrap, same thing, these are just vinyl stickers. So. And it's not a very strong mix of soapy water either, it's just enough to get a little bit of sudsy action whenever you spray it on the tank. And then just, you know, squeegee it off and the vinyl will stick right wherever you want it. So I didn't sand the red paint or anything like that, you know. I did have to let it fully cure before putting these on there. So. just cleaning the whole thing with glass cleaner just because glass cleaner doesn't leave any residue at all it's kind of like rubbing alcohol so this 2k clear coat that I'm gonna be using uh, it is it's got the recoat times and everything on the back of the can so follow those instructions and another thing is so you want to apply the clear coat either within one hour after the top layer of the paint or you want to wait till the tank fully cures, or the paint fully cures, sorry. So, and it'll say on the back of the can, just off the top of my memory, I believe it's one hour. Within one hour of the last coat of paint, or after it's completely fully cured, which can take weeks up to months. So, this is that clear coat I was telling you about. Comes in a rattle can, you can get it on eBay or Amazon for like, I think 25 bucks a can. And it's just 2K. This is a max gloss. They also have it in satin and matte. But it's a catalyst clear coat. So what I'm doing right there, there's a little button that opens a canister on the inside of the can and allows the two parts to mix. So kind of like how an epoxy mixes and hardens, this does the same thing. So this spray is good for 24 hours after you mix it, 48 hours. It'll say on the can, but it's just something to consider. If you have a lot of different stuff you needed to paint, I would wait and do it all at once. So that way you don't have to buy more cans of it, because it is kind of expensive. But it does have a good pattern to lay down, lay the paint down. So again, the first layer, just a light coat, like we've been doing before. But this clear coat is really well at setting inside the grooves of the orange peel and everything like that. I'll show you all in a minute. But this stuff is, uh, it's pretty nasty stuff. You don't want to be breathing it in. So I've got an N95 mask on right now. Just 
protecting me from these vapors because these vapors are pretty harmful really harmful so yeah like I was saying this clear coat it's two part like epoxy so it chemically hardens so if you get like gas on your gas tank it won't destroy it the first motorcycle tank I ever did I just used clear coat that was from like AutoZone or O'Reilly's they have enamel and then they have acrylic and the first time I painted the tank I used the enamel and then I got like three drops of gas on it and it ate it all the way down to the bare metal even after curing. Then the next one I used the enamel so I repainted the tank the whole nine yards I used the enamel clear coat and the exact same thing happened. So gas is a pretty strong solvent and it'll literally dissolve a lot of stuff including the clear coat of the paint and that's why I chose this clear coat because it chemically hardens and since it chemically hardens instead of just using the air uh, is more solvent resistant and protective so right here I'm ceramic coating the tank I waited two weeks for the paint to fully cure I actually believe I waited a little longer maybe more like four weeks but normally you just gotta wait two weeks. So this is G-Technique ceramic coating. One of my buddies owns a detail shop and he recommended it, which he uses it for Lamborghini, so it's good enough for my little RD60. <laughs> the good thing about this though, since it was never taken out on the road or anything, you don't have to paint correct, you don't have to polish, don't have to do anything of that. So you can just wait for it to cure, wipe it off with rubbing alcohol to get all the dirt off, and then apply the ceramic coating as per the manufacturer's recommendations. So again, coming up, here was the tank before, before we got a hold of it. I mean, you can see near the seat, it is just rough looking. And here's what it ended up. So if you're new to the channel, this whole motorcycle's restoration is going to be on the channel with the series. So uh, if you're interested, be sure to check that out. And again, I just wanted to show that you can do a quality painting of a motorcycle tank with spray paint. So, you know, you don't have to have all the resources that a shop has. You can make a professional looking tank with rattle cans. And that's just what I wanted to show here. So again, Thanks for watching. Uh, if you've got any questions, leave a comment. If you like the video, please like the video. Uh, or even consider subscribing. So, thank you very much. This is Octane Restorations. and Have a good one.